Hello and welcome to the Startups of London podcast. I'm your host Ozan and the founder of Startups of London. Today, I'm joined by Marietta Bencheva, co-founder of Consulton. So Consulton enables companies source top-tier independent consultants for a fraction of the cost. At least this is what it says on their website. <laughs> their goal is uh, to make professional consulting accessible for all the businesses. Welcome, Marietta. Thank you so much for um, inviting me. So how do we know startup founders are willing to pay for consulting? Hmm. Um, yeah, actually, that's, a, that's a, um, a really interesting question. And this is our journey. Because uh, initially, when we launched the platform, that was four years ago, before COVID, businesses and uh, startup owners were more reluctant to work with consultants online and the whole like concept of uh, like uh, being connected first online and of course like after that if you develop this into a small project you will meet the the consultant but they weren't willing to to take this on board for us our whole model developed during and after covid uh, fortunate or unfortunate fact because people saw that um, they can work with consultants online and they can work really well with consultants online. The close followers of the Startups of London content will know when the pandemic hit, uh, I think three or four months in, we've actually created a format called Live Streamed Consulting, where we had uh, a startup founder and two consultants who we um, manually matched uh, in the background in terms of like, what does the startup need and what, what is the expertise of these consultants? So, and, and I would join the room, so it would be four of us, two consultants, the startup founder and I, and I would just do the introduction and get out of the way and the rest of the conversation would be kind of like a live streamed episode where the two consultants were trying to help the business founder. So I, I agree with that. There is, there is that interest and, and, and it is technically feasible consultants can help founders in a lot of ways but the problem i see is it is really difficult to create demand for something if the demand is all already not there so in terms yeah. of in terms of the demand in the market so can you tell us about the market opportunity and the market appetite you're responding to just a, a little bit of background. Um, so me and the other co-founder, we are consultants for many years, uh, like um, uh, corporate consultants in big corporations. And we saw that, um, I mean, consultants and the network of consultants, they exchange a lot of knowledge. They implement this in the next project. Uh, so the knowledge is there and it's a really like valuable knowledge. But when we started like this kind of like informal discussions, we were we. We basically reached the conclusion, and it's a well-known fact, that all this knowledge just stays within the consultants and within the big corporations. It never um, reaches the small and medium companies or startups just because they cannot afford like, to pay, let's say, £3,000 per day for a consultant. And when we created the platform initially, and this actually some people might see it as um, actually a mistake initially for a startup, we didn't have the monetization in place. So we just created a platform where consultants and uh, small business owners or startups, they can uh, exchange knowledge through the platform based on like the business, the small business owners post a challenge and then consultants uh, reply with their knowledge to that challenge completely free. And even till, till now, uh, the platform is completely free to use. And we saw that consultants were more openly Initially, we thought that businesses will start immediately posting their challenges. So because they are hungry to know um, like what somebody really experienced will advise them. But it wasn't the case. Consultants were the one who were driving, like they were posting challenges, they were posting answers, and they just wanted to, to explore what other consultants are thinking on this particular challenge. While businesses and small business owners uh, and startups they were writing to us in an email um, so like behind the scenes basically and they were saying like can you help us with that but they weren't willing to uh, openly share their business challenge mm -hmm. 
Uh, so that was first surprise for us. Then when we started actually digging uh, into the data, because we are also based in UK, in London, our initial target, initially we thought our target will be basically London businesses. We started digging into the data and we saw that there are 43,000 small and medium companies in London only. And this is like small and medium companies uh, with 10 to 250 employees. So basically it's not one person company. It's like between 10 to 250 employees. And um, 32% of these companies worked actually, they have experience with consultants, but they were, uh, and they were spending like, this is like a data from the statistics, mm-hmm. uh, 91 million hours with external experts. You know, like you might like search for like HR expert or like yeah. when you're recruiting or for example, when some accounting or all these kind of things, but they spend this 91 million um, hours, which actually resulted into 22 billion paid pounds paid from SMEs to external consultants like this is like a really broad so actually the market is there it's even there now but like after that when we started like um, going into more details we saw that of course because they were like researching online then they contacted the company the company gave them a contract you know it's like this kind of like uh, engagement and half of this Uh, companies they weren't happy with the service that they received because it wasn't like i mean somebody contacted somebody can you help us with that but there was like no initial like conversation okay this is our challenge and this is what we expect as an output and just like one off or like something that is more like uh, detailed oriented so we said okay so it's a matter of like it's a matter of trust and it's a matter of understanding of these small and medium companies that they can actually reach the highly experienced consultants that help big corporations so this 22 billion pounds you 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 say that are paid from small companies to consultants yearly so this is a yearly figure for the entirety of uk or or just for london yes no so this is for this is just for London, which is like the surprising fact. And, uh, and it's, for... quite, it's, a, it's quite a lot of money, uh, the 22 yes. billion pounds. So there is a big market here. But it I is. wonder, I wonder, consultancy is a pretty broad term and people mean different things when, yes. when they say consultants, like they mean contractors. It can be, it can basically be building a fence. It can be repairing something. Uh, around the office that goes as consulting work sometimes so um, this, like the um, range is very broad and some of them is very technical some of them is in, in very specific niches so how does that break down i wonder yeah so the the main breakdown uh, yeah, according to the statistics so this 22 billion is uh, paid to external external experts and 3 billion uh, out of this 22 billion 3 billion is paid for consulting like consulting in the pure form of consulting like uh, you take like i don't know a strategy advisor or like um, marketing development or something like this so this is basically like pure consulting 3 billion the 22 billion is like this broad range of like uh, hr expert accounting finance this that you are saying with the defense are I'm not quite sure because um, in the statistics, uh, they have a different split for, you know, like, for example, I don't know, cleaning services or uh, like uh, building services. So every external expert that somehow is connected with your business and you had like some one-off communication or let's say it might be like a one-year project, for example, if you are doing some business strategy. Of course, uh, sometimes intuition is not uh, relevant, but sometimes it is. So uh, the three billion figure is actually in line with my intuitive understanding of, of how the London startup ecosystem works having yes. been studying it for the last four or five years now. So I would agree with that. The, a three billion total for consulting in, in, in its pure form, as you said, the strategy, the marketing development. That yeah. makes sense because the rest, like the 22 billion figure is most likely uh, an HR expert lending out their time, an accounting yeah. expert, a legal expert, specialist yes. lending out their time. And it's yes. kind of like contractor work. So like that volume would be 22 billion. That does make sense. Yes. Um, and from that 3 billion, 
a group of people would be your target market. So how do you break that, break it down further to the number of, so I think this brings the question of who is your target persona? How do you define them? Hmm. Yeah. Um, so initially, our whole platform um, was focused on a process improvement and um, streamline processes. So anything that will bring like efficiencies in the business. However, our first client was an American company, basically creating, um, creating, yeah, creating uh, masks, face masks for like COVID. And they actually, they contacted us um, because they wanted uh, tax advice because they were, want, they were entering on the UK market and they had like, uh, yeah, when they had the conversation with, with the consultant um, he um, in tax, he showed them that they had many mistakes and they will have problems with HMRC here with these invoices that they were, they were creating because of course, like their VAT was different and all these kind of things. So this was our first client, for example. Our second client was a consulting company based in France, a small consulting company based in France, and they wanted a due diligence IT, uh, so um, an IT consultant to do due diligence for one software that they wanted to buy really fast, but they wanted to move like, um, they wanted to call in 24 hours and they wanted to, the, to have the due diligence report done within the next two weeks. So then we say, said, okay, obviously, like, um, it's not like what we expect because, you know, like mm-hmm. process improvement and efficiencies is something like you always have these projects in corporations. Um, yeah. But the thing is that obviously small and medium companies, they weren't there yet. They weren't like they had many other issues to resolve before like process efficiency. So that's why we just like decided, okay, we are open. We have consultants. Anyway, we have consultants and experts that are on the platform and that can help. We just like go through the beta, go through the database filter and find the, the, rele- the relevant uh, consultant. So in terms of like who is our persona, I would say like there is no ideal persona in our case. It's basically, I mean, it will be more vague my explanation, but um, it's a person like it can be a director, it can be an owner of a company, it can be a manager that is just, I mean, he or she just struggles with the business challenge that he or she doesn't know how to take forward. And it might be like, in a really like broad way how they will describe the challenge but then because we we are able actually to dig into the details then we'll reach to okay the outputs that you would like to see is this Mm -hmm. then the the person that because they might contact us for something like the it can be really broad what their challenge is and when we dig it might be the case that they don't need business strategy consultant they might need I don't know, like a digital marketing (laughs) consultant. So it really depends what the output they expect is. That's why I would say like director, business owner uh, with the business challenge, with the lack of capacity within his or her own team and company, and they really don't know how to take it forward, but it bothers them. One of the things that I've realized working as a, I've, I've worked as a consultant, management consultant as well for a few years. Yeah. Uh, I've done some executive recruitment. I've uh, been working with startups and I've also had a few chats with different businesses who built businesses, startups like yours, focused on consulting uh, or, or giving strategy advice to startups. I've done some mentoring, so I know that bit. And one of the companies that we've built was a, a company called Culture Boom. Uh, it, it was basically... It, it was not a consulting business, but it was a tool for startup founders uh, to focus on company culture. But I think we could we could throw that into the same bucket in, mm. f- from the perspective of a startup founder or, or like a small business founder, pending a resource they have, money, time, energy, effort, whatever, for the improvement, betterment of their company. And yeah. the, the cumulative understanding that I have as a result of all these observations and experiences is there is a big difference between what we, I will say we as consultants or or people with consultancy background understand about the business and can clearly see uh, what needs to be improved versus what the founder or the director himself or herself thinks that what what should be done so usually the need we, we see it because imagine we're like a doctor 
and then yes. you, you see the need okay the need is that you need to exercise more but it does not necessarily translate into the in, into that person the client having the desire to exercise so the, the, exactly. the, the, the and, and these are two very different things and because of that i think that's the main struggle with 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 the biz, with, with businesses like consultant and i think this is going to be one of the major obstacles that you might need to overcome so how do you think about that problem how would you try to overcome it in the coming months and years and how would you approach it Hmm. Yes, uh, that's yeah. Currently, like actually, currently. It's a difficult for the past, question. I realize. For, yes, it's for an the, important question, and that's why I'm asking. Yes, yes. I will tell you. We actually faced that one with one of our clients, and actually, he's with us for the past one year. Because initially, when he contacted us, he's a producer, a vinegar producer, of like uh, traditional vinegars and organic vinegars. And initially when he contacted us, he contacted us because he wanted help with international, okay, business development internationally. Yeah. So he wanted to win more international markets. He had capacity to produce because he invested a lot of money in his yeah, production facilities. And initially he contacted us for this. Yes, he started working with business consultant, helping he, the business consultant help them reach international markets. So they already have like, four new countries um, in their portfolio. But the thing is that during that work, this business uh, consultant, he, he saw that actually the company, the whole branding of the company, it's not positioned right. And he started speaking with the company owner and he explained, yes, fine. Yes, we have these four new markets now. We reached that for the past one year. But you have a problem with your branding? And then now he's in the position now currently working with another set of consultants from the platform who are actually rebranding his portfolio because yeah. um, it is really like um, when you see how they had it, it was really outdated. They have really quality content, but actually the bottling and the, the labeling and everything, it's not, it's not there. It's like really outdated. The, the second thing is that they didn't have any like this kind of like marketing messages, like why we are doing this, like what is the use of like why organic vinegar, like what is the purpose of it and all these kind of things, because organic vinegar is really a healthy thing, like if you have it in your own diet on a daily basis. But they never like, um, they knew that they are producing a really good product, but they never had like a, a nutritionist on board, like explaining like, like yeah. from, a, from a doctor's perspective, why and how it should be combined for different people. Because of course, it's not like for everybody. If you have problems with your stomach and all these kinds of things, yeah, in specific things, you need to be avoiding uh, vinegar. But they never had. So now from something that basically the owner came and said, I want more market. It actually turned, yes, okay, you start like working for more markets with the consultant, but actually you have a really like, you have a root cause uh, that you need to solve be before or during yeah. this work. And they weren't coming, like they, they didn't think initially even that they didn't think what is wrong with our branding and labeling. Uh, so this was, the, of course, the first reaction. So now they are actually working on that and it takes time and it's this element of trust because if uh, I would say with the small and medium companies, if they come with a challenge and you show them that um, or the consultant like show, shows them that, yes, we can solve this challenge doing this and that. And the consultant shows some results and output, output, then they can... Um, trust the consultant and they can say okay we are ready for second phase as yes. you will say but it's if if you don't respond to to the needs of the consultant of the business initially how how would he trust you on like no you need to do this like who not. are you like coming like see, seeing my business for five minutes and saying no yeah. you, know, you need to do this <laughs> Good consultants um, are, are good for a reason, and and people underestimate yes. how how difficult the, the, that 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 it's it's a really complex job actually. Uh, you really and, yes. and yes, like there are different types of consultants. I I think there's a problem with the word 
consultant itself. Oh yes, because yes, it so yes. Many it's a things. dirty. It's a, in, in some cases it's a dirty word. In some cases uh, like... it's dirty. In some cases it's confusing. It, like yes. uh, what what the heck does it mean? But uh, like in this context, we are specifically talking about a person who has an in-depth understanding of an industry, of or a or a process, or or, or, or some some ty- type of complex dynamics, whether it be people decisions, marketing decisions, brands, technology, and like that expertise, that know-how is in the head of that person. And on the other hand, there is a business that needs that that could benefit from that uh, information, that know-how, and that experience. And a consultant is the one who provides that. But the yes. problem usually is once that conversation starts, the consultant, if, 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 if the consultant has good people skills, is able to create trust, really dig in and understand the problem of the business uh, and, and create a lasting and long, long-term relationship with their client in a way that's going to help them both. But I think this is kind of the later stage of, of the evolution of that dialogue. And if, if the consultant is good and, and is, is savvy, I think it's going to work. But the success of your business, Consultone, I think uh, my, my superficial understanding, of course, relies to, to the same extent the, the, the previous step before, before that actual conversation happens with the consultant, right? That's kind of, that seems kind of like to be the bottleneck for with these kind of businesses. So how do you reach a, yes. a good volume of people who are in need of consulting and how do you find consultants and how do you match them? So with yes. that in mind, what I would like to ask to you is, what are the key metrics you're following for the success of this business right now? Yeah. So our most important key metric is um, um, so how many advisory calls turn into long term projects. And this might be like I'm not speaking like long term projects in terms of like 10 years project or something. It can be even like one week project. So uh, but basically this is our most important key metric advisory calls turn into project so after the call basically mm-hmm. the business is comfortable that whatever like they received in this one hour as an approach solution from uh, from the advisor they are comfortable that they can actually turn it into the next steps and ask uh, for help uh, mm-hmm. from the consultant because we as a business we take a percentage uh, from the total value of the invoice that will be invoiced for the project and this is important so it's important for our economic um, yeah um, economic development for consultant and in terms of because you were asking how do we approach businesses first of all consultants they know the platform more and more because and this is this was a surprise for us. We weren't prepared for that. Initially, we thought that consultants will be more reluctant to openly share their knowledge and join a platform where they might not receive any money. But actually, they started the moment like the moment we launched the platform, they started joining. Consultants were joining faster than businesses. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I told you, like businesses were just sending emails without joining the platform. And it does make sense because, po- like, uh, the, there's kind of like this basic: who is trying to sell what to exactly. whom type of a thing. Yes, yes, yes. But the fact is that our platform is free, so that's why we were surprised uh, that consultants are actually spending some time. Anyway, it's like two seconds, like to join the platform. It's a really fast process, but it's still like they spend time to join the platform and then start like hmm, posting some things. Anyway, so and consultants, what we saw after that is when we approach a consultant for a particular business challenge, and the consultant currently is busy with some project or or they might have a permanent job. Um, so, and they said, okay, I won't be able to be on board on that challenge, mm-hmm. but I would prefer uh, like my friend or my ex colleague who is like has this expertise. And they started like referring people or sending CVs of people um, or making some people like other consultants join the platform. So consultants actually started referring like other consultants to join. Um, and this was super, super nice to see. Um, uh, on the other side, businesses, this is our like difficult part here, is we just approach them like um, like individual with individual messages. So we make a research 
basically our research is based on like we read in i mean online we read different articles about companies and usually over there like the ceo uh, or the the owner or the director of the business uh, shares um, our next uh, goal uh, is this and this uh, so basically they will need some help um, among these uh, sentences mm-hmm. and then we just approach them we usually on linkedin because this is we saw that um, approaching them sending an email Email, it's not working like people they don't like reading emails from a stranger so we just send them a really short message on LinkedIn and uh, we say like we saw that your next goal is this or you have a challenge with this would you like to discuss uh, that with us so it's a really slow process of attracting business but it's it's working like for us this is the way like we might spend a lot of time on research and then yeah. conduct the business but for us is this and the second thing is referrals so referrals is uh, the thing that works for us like uh, some business worked with us and then they just refer another business or a friend there that has a business challenge I mean, all the best to you. I think this is an uphill battle. But and and uh, the, I think it makes sense to think in terms of your competitors. We ran out of time, but this is the last question mm-hmm. I would perhaps li- love to ask. Have you heard th- this announcement uh, almost b- by? I think it was by Netflix when they said uh, who who were your competitors, and they said Fortnite or something. And uh, I actually think there is a lot of intelligence be- behind that ap- approach, in the sense that. What you're competing is in a broad way. Uh, okay, am I gonna uh, turn on Fortnite and play a game, or am I am I going to launch Netflix yes. and watch a movie? So that's basic. Uh, yes. the, you're competing over the time of that person. So who is your d- biggest competitor? If you think in broad terms, in a way that people like the the, the people you target are using or or, or can use or or perhaps. It might it might even not be a consulting business. Mm. It might be, for example, one of the competitors I think for your business is Google. Like uh, like Google's specific search, or uh, of course not the exactly. entire company itself. So who who are your uh, perhaps more closer, more direct, but also relevant competitors in this space? Yeah, if I take it like from like uh, the same approach as Netflix answer, I would say the business owner being tired. So and being like without, I mean, not having the will to to fight anymore, like just letting it go. Like if like, oh, the company is like earning some money, fine, or we'll sell the company soon, or, you know, like just letting it like without like fighting for like how we can solve this challenge or something like this. So the desire actually to progress, we, it, it needs to be there. Another yeah. thing is uh, like the, the general like competitor, like uh, if we if we speak, it can be like any small consulting company any Mm -hmm. like big consulting company because i'm surprised that anyway it's it's a difficult market but uh, big consulting companies they underestimate how big opportunity is there like to give solutions for small and medium companies and startups so of course they can um, do this really fast uh, like if they decide to uh, take on that market but it's a market that requires a lot of effort so that's why probably for them is easy like to focus on corporations they pay like for 10 years project yeah, yeah, so yeah. and yes it's i would say like you, you mentioned google this is something that actually we promote so that's why we have the the free content so we if you and your business uh, can like by reading something can implement the solution that's fine like perfect like you have a really good team but the thing is that what we saw from our practice is that you might read a lot of like articles you might read books as well for a particular challenge but if you have never done that like solution and like uh, implementing it in real life yes uh, then it's really difficult. You will spend even probably more time like struggling, like how to do that instead of like having like an expert who have done that many times. So I would say longer term challenge and competitor for us is, I would say probably some combination between artificial intelligence and the big data software that is like, I don't know, like some kind of like um, mm-hmm. robot that is like uh, like a digital consultant basically. <laughs> 
So in time, perhaps in time, yeah, but, uh, yeah, but uh, this is our like goal as well. Like we have some strategy, like moving forward with this kind of digitalization. But I would say yes. So it should be a, it should be, yeah, it should be a, a combination between like knowing how to do and uh, uh, and expertise. Marietta, thank you for this wonderful chat. I really enjoyed having you on the show, and it's been a good conversation about. Uh, reaching to startups, founders, consultancy in general, and building a business, validating, understanding market size, and, and your growth so far. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Azan. It was a really a nice conversation for me because you know the market so well. <laughs> so, yeah. Quite fun. Same here. Yeah, really nice. Thank you so much. Thank you.